Hello everyone, my name is Mikhailo. Uh, today I'm going to present you a new RabbitMQ connector that we are going to release in scope of R32 release. Uh, that will be a better client uh, with like native interface with RabbitMQ and it will be a better option than MQB connection that we have today because MQB is like more general pr uh, protocol and we just don't support all the concepts of RabbitMQ. For example, you cannot work with durable queue. Uh, you uh, it's a little bit hard to work with exchanges. With this connector you will have that out of the box. Uh, in, uh, first I'm going to show you the connection and some of the uh, settings uh, it has and then a couple of demos just to demonstrate how it works. Okay, so here we have our RabbitMQ connector. Uh, it has connection properties, one event source and one event target. Uh, if you look at the connection properties we'll see a couple of sections. Uh, the first section is connection settings. Here you provide host name, port, virtual host, and you can enable or disable SSL. Uh, the next section is username and password. And the third one is SSL settings. If you enable SSL here, uh, then you may want to select a custom trust store lo uh, file location and trust store password. If you leave those fields empty, default trust store will be used. Uh, you can provide it via this GVN site property and the password for it via this, this property. Also, if you don't want to validate uh, server certificates, you can enable trust all. Not recommended, but sometimes quite useful, especially for dev purposes. And the last section is advanced settings. Uh, here you have connection uh, timeout, heartbeat interval, both are in seconds and two properties that uh, allow to uh, tell uh, RabbitMQ uh, what to do in case if there is no uh, queue to put the message in. For example, if I send a message uh, to exchange with a custom routing key which uh, doesn't have a rule in the exchange and uh, RabbitMQ just doesn't know to which queue to put the message, it can silently, silently drop such messages if mandatory uh, is not set for the message. Uh, and guaranteed delivery is disabled, or if the message is mandatory and guaranteed delivery is enabled, then uh, instead of dropping silent the mess such message, an exception will be returned back. So our process that writes the message will fail. Uh, by the way, mandatory flag is just default value uh, for messages that we write. Um, it can be overwritten in the message using head header. Okay, let's switch to event sources. Uh, in event source, uh, first of all, we have queue name from which we uh, want to consume messages. Uh, uh, it's like in MQP. Uh, the next one is connection content settings. Here we can provide object uh, list uh, root element name, as in case of MQP, and select the uh, content format text, XML, JSON, binary. That's again the same as in case of MQP. Then we have that lettering settings. That's active the letter uh, routing settings um, that are used uh, by uh, uh, connector on the agent to uh, redirect that message to some dead letter key. You can enable or disable that and if enabled you can provide exchange name and routing key. If exchange name is empty then the default uh, exchange is used and the routing key is in this case uh, key name. Uh, why message should be put in. Uh, if you use custom exchange and custom routing rules, then this will be a routing key that will be used to redirect message to the proper queue. Then we have advanced settings. Uh, the first one is other attributes, just normal other attributes fields that we have in other connectors as well. Uh, we have prefetch count, that's the number of messages that we prefetch uh, to consume messages faster. Can be uh, you can decrease or increase this value. Default is 100. And the most important setting here is auto knowledge. It controls how we handle messages. If auto knowledge is enabled, the message is automatically removed from the queue as soon as we pick it up. Then it's up to us to decide what to do with this message if we cannot consume it, for example. Uh, if auto knowledge is set to false, and for example if uh, our process fails, then um, a uh, message will be returned back to the queue and then it's up to the RabbitMQ to decide what to do with such messages. 
uh, if we use active routing then it uh, makes sense to use auto knowledge and uh, for example if you want to have the latitude routing on RFTMQ side then it's better to use auto knowledge now to make sure that the RabbitMQ will have a chance to redirect message to proper latitude queue on the RabbitMQ side. I will show that in the demo. If you speak about event targets, then uh, settings are quite simple, uh, but the difference between this and MQP event target is that in MQP we also used a queue to put messages in. Here we have a possibility to use exchange and routing stuff of the rabbit in queue. Again, exchange name uh, empty means that default exchange is used, and routing queue is just the default routing key value. I, again, when you write a message in the IPD, you can uh, provide a custom routing key. Uh, you have content format as well and other attributes. That's it. Pretty simple. And that's basically it. So one event source, one event target. Uh, now let me show you a couple of demos that demonstrate some of the features that I mentioned. Uh, and then the first demo is the following. So I have a process that writes a message with default low routing, with empty routing uh, key header uh, to the um, RabbitMQ via event target. Uh, since the routing key is empty, then uh, the routing key provided in the connection will be used. And since in my connection the exchange name is not set, uh, then this means that this will be basically the queue name. Uh, so the message goes through default exchange to the queue and then it is consumed by another process as you can see that process uh, uses auto knowledge equal yes in the connection which means the message is removed from the queue as soon as it picks it up then my process will fail and because of default uh, and active routing the settings uh, in the uh, consumer as you can see uh, the message will uh, be actively redirected to the let pair queue via the same default exchange Okay, let me show you that. So, uh, I'm calling my process. It may take a bit of time because I haven't invoked my agent for a while. Okay, so while it's working, I will show you the RabbitMQ. So, the idea is the following. My message will be put uh, to default queue. Then it will uh, go to the IPD. IPD will fail and the message will be uh, put into the Q1. Uh, at uh, that uh, redirection will be ha uh, will be happening on uh, agent side since I have auto knowledge yes which means that the message is uh, deleted from the queue as soon as it pick it up and then uh, this set those settings will redirect the message to the DLQ1 in case of fault. Okay, and let's give it a second to complete the communication. And uh, okay, so the message was put into the uh, default queue. As you can see, there was some activity, and then after a few seconds, the message should appear on that letter Q1. Okay, so as you can see, if we go to the that letter Q and get the message content, we will see that the message was put into the queue, and as you can see, that's the arrow that letter Q routing key that we have in our that letter settings. Okay, so that's the first demo. The second demo is almost the same, but this time I use auto knowledge equal no, and uh, instead of routing the message to that LQ uh, on agent side, I leave this uh, app to the RabbitMQ. So again, the message is put into uh, the queue via default exchange with default routing key. Then uh, our process pick it up uh, and fail. No routing happens on our side. Uh, message is returned back to the queue because of auto knowledge disabled. Then uh, the queue will redirect the message to the dead letter queue via its settings. If you go to the RapidMQ, we will see those settings on the bad queue. So as you can see, I set uh, to use default exchange for the letter routing and uh, deal queue to routing queue, which means that the message should appear on uh, that letter Q2. Okay, let's call the process. Okay, and while it's working, I will show you how the event source uh, is configured. So as you can see this time, I don't use that lettering on our client on client side, and auto knowledge is disabled this time. Okay, so let's give it a chance to complete.
and I expect to see that the message will be put into bad queue and then uh, consumed, failed and uh, redirected to the q 2 by the queue on the RapidMQ site. So, so as you can see the message was put into the queue, since out on knowledge is disabled the message is marked as unpacked for a while and then when process fails then it's redirected to the q 2 as you can see. So that's the second demo that demonstrates how we organize the letter Q routing on the RabbitMQ site. And the first demo is also quite simple. I just sent a couple of messages with different routing key to colors exchange, which is my default exchange, and in their exchange I have rules to redirect them to different queues by the key. Uh, the event target that I use is quite simple. It's just uh, a target uh, that has exchange name set and default value for routing key, which is black. And if I open the process, uh, I will see just three invocations of the event target uh, with different uh, routing key, as you can see. Color blue, color red, and in this case I don't have, have routing key, so default black will be used. And if I call the process last time, uh, that process uh, will should put three messages to three color queues that they have here. Okay, again it takes some time. And when it finishes, I will see those messages. And uh, meanwhile, if I go to the exchange that I use, as you can see, I have three routing rules for different routing keys and different queues that I created. So that's where the routing happens. Okay, okay so the messages were created. If I refresh, I should see them in the queues. Yeah, so if I open, for example, right queue, I will see that the message that was put into that queue was with the correct red key. Okay, so that's it basically. So uh, we'll see how we can use RabbitMQ with the new connector and that um, it allows us to use the native concepts of the RabbitMQ. Thank you for your attention.